What is going on, Culture Junkie Nation? It's your boy, Ken Shiro. We're back with another great episode of Culture Junkies Live. I am so excited because we have a very, very special guest on the show with us today. Mr. Scott Barber, the director, of, co-director, excuse me, of The Orange Years, a fantastic, fantastic documentary about the rise of Nickelodeon over the course of the 80s, 90s, and, and into the aughts. Mr. Barber, thank you very much for joining us today. Oh, my pleasure. Thanks for having me. This is really exciting. <laughs> We are glad to be here. Definitely I'm joined glad. by we are joined. I am joined in studio by my good friends, the Dapper One GQ, the great Datakuji to my right, and across from me, the man who is behind this interview, getting it for us, Super Nerd Plus. What's up? Hello, everybody. Hello. So, <laughs> seems how he's basically your special guest. Why don't you hit him with the first question? This is your this is your baby. Uh, well, you know. What's your favorite Nickelodeon show? <laughs> oh my god! Oh, what a softball question! I Come know, on. Right, 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 right. My favorite Nickelodeon show? Yes. Uh, that is so difficult. Like, that would have been difficult even before I made the documentary. But after getting to meet all the creators and actors of all these shows and, like, hear, like, their passion behind it is, like, insane. But if I had to choose, I would say, Are You Afraid of the Dark? Mm -hmm. Just because I love the horror aspect. I'm a huge horror fan. I think that the fact that that show had to have a different cast on every single episode, you know, yeah, you had the midnight society at the beginning and the end, yeah. but the body of the show had a different cast and totally different styles. Sometimes it was aliens. Sometimes it was vampires. Sometimes it was ghosts. It really had a, a wide spectrum of, of things that you could see on that show. So that's why it's my favorite. That's awesome. So you only get one question now that you wasted on that softball. <laughs> you gotta put me on the spot. I wasn't expecting like, oh. hey man, you gotta be ready. You, should, you should know by now. You gotta be ready. Yes, GQ, what right. you got for him? Uh, uh, well, basically, just just coming from the production side of things. I mean, it, it's logistically speaking, it's probably a nightmare to go across not only just you know uh, an entire network's worth of content, a network's worth of of actors, actresses, directors. Uh, vice, you know, VPs, executive uh, presidents, all that, the, the whole shebang, basically, because you guys touched and talked to a lot of people. What was the, the hardest part about, I guess, just getting it going, getting it started? Like, you know, because yeah. like you and Adam and, and obviously all the producers and everybody involved did an amazing job. But it's like, thank you. What, yeah. What was what was the main challenge of just, you know, like, OK, how do we start this? Yeah, I mean, that was starting was the, the hardest part. Um, this documentary was just started originally with me and Adam and an Indiegogo campaign where we got some mm. money. You know, there was no big studio behind it. Um, and so we had never made a movie before. <laughs> so we were calling up people. It's like, hey, here's two dudes from Texas trying to make a movie who have uh, never made a movie before. Uh, please do this. <laughs> um, so it was it was rough in the beginning. Because like you said, you know, it's not like this was, you know, if you make a documentary about one movie, you know, you get that cast, you get a couple of cast members, they probably all know each other and you're good. You know, this was 20 years of a network and these shows, some were filmed in Canada, some were filmed in L.A., some were filmed in Arizona, some in Florida, a lot of them in Florida. So a lot of these cast members did not know each other and we knew we would have to get uh, our rule was, you know, we wanted to get at least one person behind the camera, like a writer, a director, a creator, and then one person in front of the camera, like an actor or a host or something for each show to make it feel authentic. So it was a big task. Uh, and me and Adam, you know, when we our Kickstarter um, was successful, we felt like we had done it, you know, and then we took a second. We're like, oh, crap. Now the hard work begins of <laughs> booking everybody. People ask us a lot of times, like, did you have access? Did you know somebody before? No, we didn't. And and I would recommend anybody who wants to make a documentary, try to get access before because uh, we <laughs> yeah. were scared. We were like, what if everybody says no, you know, and mm. we do this documentary. Um, but luckily, you know, I think it shows how awesome Nickelodeon was um, because everyone was excited to do the documentary. Um, they were just as nostalgic as we were. You know, we were nostalgic watching these shows they were nostalgic being on these shows yeah so um uh you know they were they were it, it, people were very welcoming a lot of people you know we've got keenan thompson in the documentary that's a guy who <laughs> had every right to say no he's yeah on, mm -hmm. you know he, he's on snl he's got his own show coming out and uh you know he said yes and i think that shows you how awesome nickelodeon was for those people you know 
Real quick follow up to that. Um, who was the first person to say yes? Oh hmm. my God, let me think. Um, I think it was Michael Ray Bauer from uh, Salute Your Shorts. Oh, nice. nice. Uh, he played Donkey Lips. <laughs> we we asked him to do because we asked him to do a um, like a little like a you know we had our Kickstarter campaign um, and we asked him to do a um, like a stretch goal thing you know like if like a uh, we had a couple of other videos. We had our main video, and then we had two or three other videos that we were releasing throughout our campaign as like follow up videos. And he did one for us, awesome. uh, and that helped because um, you know it added a lot of legitimacy uh, because it showed that we did have at least one person. Uh, so yeah, true. he was the first person. That's true because sometimes I mean you gotta you have to show people that hey this is real this isn't just you know like you said it's two guys from texas and you know we're just going to do this thing it's like no we got people that are interested we're just gonna you know make it happen so that's that's awesome man congratulations on that definitely Mm -hmm. because like i said and for everybody in the chat uh hi to all the people in the chat and make sure you uh, stick around uh we're gonna have uh an ask me anything Uh, well respectfully almost anything anything, (laughs) uh for i'm frozen on there aren't i yeah yeah Yeah. Uh, Hey, that's an interesting. We got a cool thumbnail out of that, though. You know, that's like prime blackmail material right there. (laughs) Right? I know exactly. This yeah, dude made a movie. Hey, if, 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 if this guy can make a movie, anybody can make a movie. <laughs> 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 I mean, but, hey, you know, he's being a good sport about it, though. Oh, yeah, definitely. Is, yeah, he's definitely. Uh, yeah. Is yeah, there no, anything people, I can do? I don't know. Is there anything I can do to to refresh it? I don't know. Uh, but, uh, not really too sure. That's, um, that's a good question. That's a very good question. Um, you know what? Uh, let's. I don't know. Uh, wow, we've kind of this. This, this kinda, has never happened. Before. Yeah, this is. This look, is look what you yeah, did. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, <laughs> the only me, other thing I could think is just maybe out, exit out, and then come right back in. Yeah, why don't you try that? Uh, exit out. Oh, here we go. In. Yeah. Yep. Okay. And oh, you got it. I think I'm here. Yeah. All right. Um, nope. Nope. Oops, hold on. Still hold frozen. On All right. Well. We're gonna take a couple of uh, <laughs> take a look at you know out of the chat because some people are saying uh, just listing off some of their favorite shows from Nickelodeon. I mean, Keenan and Kel, yeah. good you know, Good Burger. Well, good, Burger uh, good Burger was a movie, yeah. but obviously it was you know it's based kind of based off of that. Uh, you got people talking about Hey Dude, of course, Donkey Lips from Salute My Shorts. So I mean, it's like man, it's. <laughs> A lot of people grew up with Nickelodeon, and Nickelodeon has actually affected a lot of people. Oh, yeah. yeah. Even before I had cable, I knew what station it was on because really? all the kids oh. at there school. There we go. Hey, there we go. Nice. Hey, he's back. He's back. Norm. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, they they would always be talking about it, so I was just, like, itching to my parents got cable. And, like, first channel, first channel was Nickelodeon because you knew what it was and you knew what we were I was sh- getting into. I probably oh, shouldn't yeah. say this because my mom's probably watching, but – when we first first had cable, was that, that illegal cable. Oh. Okay. <laughs> and then and then, and then and then we actually got it. And that's when I was telling you earlier about I saw Rugrats, because I was like, oh snap, this is dope. Yeah. <laughs> I, I see right. somebody ask, were you starstruck when uh, when speaking with some of the stars? All of them. Like yes, yeah. like the yeah, whole time we were like, you know, we were basically getting to like live out our childhood. You know, it was amazing. Yeah. See, I mean, it's, it's I bet that. <laughs> man. I bet. All right, so let's get the let's get the interview back on track, shall we? Yes. Uh, all right, so I got a really important question. So um, two, mine is two pronged, actually. One, um, how long did it take for you to to kind of make the documentary? Like, when did you start? When did you finish? Yeah. Uh, so I asked that one first. So we started in early 2017. Wow. Mm. And, okay. and and basically filmed all throughout two th- 2017 and then edited all throughout 2018. Oh, and yeah. then um and then we debuted in um at a really awesome um film festival called Doc NYC. Mm-hmm. Um and that's where that's where it uh that's where we debuted the film at the end of 2018. Um, and then, you know, that's when the hard part started. Uh, it was, you know, filming and editing never felt like work. We were busting our butts the whole time, you know, filming it. We were flying all over, staying on people's couches, staying on people's floors (laughs) because we had like no budget to make this thing. Um, and then editing, we were staying up, you know, all night, just editing the whole thing, watching all these old clips but it never felt like work because it was so fun. Mm-hmm. Nice. But then, um, you know, when we had to turn it over to other people to find a home for it, that's when it got hard because we were not really involved in that. And 
you know, we did have some trials for sure there, you know, that's where, mm-hmm. that's when the sharks come out, you know, people, luckily we had a great team, uh, Endeavor content was selling it and the company that ended up buying it was Gravitas Ventures. And, uh, they also have the Ren and Stimpy doc. Mm-hmm. Um, so we're happy that it went to Gravitas, but there was a couple of weirdos that tried to buy it in between there that, <laughs> oh, man. that that's basically why the film took two years to come out was because okay. we, we, we got into some trouble there with people trying to, you know, take advantage of some young filmmakers. Or, mm. I'm not young. First time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> young in the young in the craft. That's yeah, that's what you young mean. Young in the craft. Young in the yeah, craft. Yeah, 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 that's what you meant. I got you. All right. So the follow up question I actually had was uh, kind of a, a piggyback off GQ's. He's asked you who was the first one to say who was the one that you wanted to get, but you couldn't get. Ah. Uh. I mean, honestly, that's another one. So many of them. Um, there are a lot of people that either we just couldn't find a con, we couldn't find contact information for, we couldn't get to them, mm-hmm. or sometimes we just couldn't be in the same city that they were at the same time. Mm. Uh, and then, yes, yeah, some people said no. <laughs> but um, you know, uh, we were talking before. I would love to have gotten some people from uh, my brother and me. Mm-hmm. Uh, I love. I would have loved to have gotten um, Mark Wiener from Wienerville. I think oh, that yeah. would be fun. <laughs> um, uh, uh, Mike O'Malley, the host from Guts. Oh uh, yeah, we yeah. got we got all the other hosts, and all the other hosts were so great, but we just couldn't get a hold of Mike O'Malley. Okay. Um, a big one that people talk about is uh, Alanis Morissette because she yeah. got her she got her start on You Can't Do That on Television. Yeah. Didn't mm-hmm. get her. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there are. A lot, I mean, I think we got so many people, and realistically, like we were right to cut it off when we did because I mean, we could have gone forever and already Mm -hmm. it was difficult to give all these people their time to shine uh, in 90 minutes. So, uh, you know, we had to cut it off at some point, but yeah, there were, there were a lot of people. I mean, you could have pulled a Zack Snyder and just yeah, release the Nickelodeon Nickelodeon cut. Uh, Dido, go ahead. What what do you got? Well, um, one of the big things about Nickelodeon, my honest opinion, were the game shows Mm -hmm. and, we all here love various ones. What was your favorite of, out of, of all the game shows that they put on Nickelodeon? My favorite was Nick Arcade. Like, yeah. I, just, <laughs> okay. I loved I loved video games so much, and uh, I always thought I could do a good job. And probably like every kid, I don't know yep. if you felt the same way, but yep. you always think that when you got in there, you could do so good. And uh-huh. then in the documentary, we kind of explore why mm-hmm. it was difficult, you know, because – you're watching in reverse. You're watching yourself, you know, and you think you're going this way, but really you're going this way. Oh, yeah. Um, and Phil Moore was like the coolest host. And, you know, we interviewed him for the doc and he was so nice and mm-hmm. so gracious. And he kind of, if you were watching Nickelodeon a little bit later, you know, Mark Summers in the early days was like Mr. Nickelodeon. Oh, yeah. Like he, mm-hmm. he wasn't just the host of Double Dare. Anytime they just needed a guy to like be a guy doing a countdown or doing a special – and then he kind of gave that role to, or he didn't give it. It was it was passed on to Phil Moore later, yeah. mm-hmm. um, and and I think he did a great job. And he was just such a cool guy. I, I loved all the do 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 do. All the he'd make up those he'd make up random songs and stuff. Mm-hmm. I just I love that show. So I mean that's and that's a hard one. Uh, and that's a show I think they could reboot because um, you could have him playing like modern video games. Right. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, they, they could do it. But it's not a lot of whole uh, point-based stuff nowadays. Everything's a first-person shooter, yeah. or action adventure yeah. game. Yeah. It, yeah, I mean they would have to really change the structure. I think right. if they did mm-hmm. something like that, where it probably would be like how esports are nowadays. Oh yeah, be, it, I would rather yeah. it, be it would boil down to just being like an yeah. Overwatch game. I would rather it still like be that, old school you know? because there's a lot of old games yeah. that people may have forgotten about like you could pull out the galagas you can pull out because they even yeah. have sonic the hedgehog on there just yeah. collect mm-hmm. the amount of rings a certain amount of times they could still do stuff like huh, that. it almost it, sounds it, like it, you got a got an idea in your head oh, I, i've had like that. that idea for years <laughs> to try to bring what's, like that back. a little foreshadowing <laughs> what's kind of funny is those like 32-bit and 16-bit systems like nintendo super nintendo sega genesis mm-hmm. they hold up really well oh, i think they, they hold do. up better than than the later consoles you know whenever it went to the more 3d stuff you know like uh like i have kids and we play mario world all the time and sonic and they love it yeah they're beautiful games i play them quite often i am i am the 
I wouldn't call myself a collector, though I have a lot of video games. <laughs> a lot of games, man. 400? A lot of games. No, not 400, dude. I'm in the thousands. Oh, yeah. shoot. Damn. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, <laughs> his whole thing is he, he has a lot of games, and he's never played them. Well, th- it is it is an uh, issue. When you become that. an adult, it's kind of difficult, because I'll be at work all day thinking about video games. Yeah. And then when I get home, I'm too tired to play video games. Yeah. I'm just like, <laughs> the dichotomy of being a yeah. game collector, because when you were young, you had all the time in the this world. This thing right here is my Nintendo Switch. Which I don't carry it everywhere with me, but I have it quite often, and it's it it, it was a great system. I'm glad they came out. With I, I got it. a Super question. Go ahead. Guy. I got a Go question for you, Scott. Did um, while doing the documentary, did uh, anybody give you like some old Nickelodeon merch or something that they had just to? Oh, <laughs> yeah. Okay. How about a piece got... of the aggro crag, maybe? Oh, I wish. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. I looked no, but... on eBay for one yeah. of those. Have you but seen I that did... one that's floating around on Etsy? No, go ahead. Go ahead, Scott. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, it's funny. Like making the documentary, we interviewed. There's a little segment that we do at the very end when the credits are rolling, where we talk to the fans. And uh, two of those guys had aggro crags, and Hmm. there's a third guy that had a 30th birthday that was Nickelodeon themed, Mm -hmm. and the pictures went viral and were even on like I mean Yahoo and AOL News, um, all sorts of places. Um, And he his aggro crag wasn't real. He had Mm -hmm. made it. Uh, but the right. other the, okay. o- the other two guys, his name is the sole purpose on Instagram and uh, consumer time capsule. That's their like uh, social media handles. They both have real aggro crags and I got to see nice. one nice. and it was glorious. Oh, yeah. But I, I did get a, a denim jacket, like a total 90s denim jacket that only people that worked at Nickelodeon got. That says wow. like Nickelodeon oh, on the back. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. And I got a, I know. Right. And I got a Ren and Stimpy. Uh, Sell like a <gasps> what? Sell. Oh, <laughs> oh, that is oh, dude. sick. That's cool. Yes, man, I freaking loved yeah. that show when I was when it when it first came out. A powder yeah. toast man was my dude. Powder toast man was the truth. <laughs> him and the horse. Him and the horse. The horse. horse. Yeah, no, the, yeah, the horse. No, was, sir. No, sir. I don't like it. <laughs> I still say that all the time. Me like too. whenever I whenever I don't like something, I'm like no, sir, I don't like. It. Yeah, yeah. I don't like it. It's classic, man. Yeah, GQ, you got something? Yeah. Um, Really, realistically, um, the one I guess interview that that kind of I wouldn't say surprised me, but like just given like his personality on air was Mark Summers because it's like the first thing he said in that interview was like I didn't even want to do a kid show. I'm like, mm-hmm. that's but you're great at it. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. he's a natural. The, yeah, so I mean, like. <sighs> I guess the the main question would be um, during any of the interviews, because I mean, obviously, as an editor, you you got a million things on the cutting room floor. Mm -hmm. What were some of the just shocking, like something that somebody said that was just like just took you off guard, like, you know, in in one of the interviews? I mean, obviously, if it's something that's personal, we don't want to get into that. But just like looking at them on on screen versus something they told you, like, wow, really? Uh, geez, let's think. Um, I mean, there was a lot of stuff that really surprised me, but in, if there was something that like really shocked me, um, man, I don't know. Uh, that's a, that's a great <laughs> that's question. A good question. Um, you know, probably one thing that shocked me was when we were talking about, are you afraid of the dark? Um, obviously that show is kind of crazy that the whole point was to scare the crap out of kids. Mm-hmm. And, uh, You know, they did not, a lot of times did not have a happy ending. Uh, So already that show is kind of like at a disadvantage of getting shut down. But one thing that I found out was, you know, uh, spoiler alert, they, that's not a real um, forest that they're in. Uh, It was, it was just basically a warehouse and they would just cut down a bunch of trees and then put them all in there. Um, So they're in, uh, they put a bunch of kids in a warehouse with dead trees <laughs> and, then, and then a fire that like explodes and right. they, said they definitely got the cops called on him a couple yeah of wow yeah y'all, okay. Y'all, okay y'all can't be doing that, that, <laughs> I that was pretty funny man okay that sounds pretty interesting definitely yeah. but i mean yeah that's not something that you would think of like right off right off bat right it was just like wow yeah, that one that was pretty interesting. And I mean, yeah, I mean, other than that, like, I mean, just how negative people were towards Nickelodeon in the beginning, you know, nobody wanted yeah. it. Yeah. You know, you think about it now, you're, uh, oh, yeah, the coffee mate thing. That was, yeah. that, I thought that was a funny mm-hmm. one. Yeah. Um, they, um, 
nowadays, if you were making a kid's show, your dream would be to get it on Nickelodeon. Uh, yeah. But it's mm-hmm. weird to think about a time whenever Nickelodeon was the one trying to buy shows and people like, there's no, no way I'm, I'm putting my show on your sh- crappy little network. You know, that's yeah. just wild to think of how rude people were to them. I yeah. Just, I just wonder if the guy that said, uh, I, I wish I could remember. Oh, I know what he said. He's name. like, no, no, no. Hmm. I know what he oh, said. I'm talking about her name. Oh, her name. Who he said okay. it to. Yeah. Like and if, Sweeney. And Sweeney. Sweeney. Now, yeah. if he had gone back on that and basically is trying to get shows oh, like, oh, come on. I would please, love please put this on to Nicole. have that. Yeah. Well, we did find out a mini version of that happened. So Vanessa Coffey, she was the executive producer of all the Nicktoons. Um, she was the one that came to Nickelodeon and was like, hey, y'all should do cartoons. Mm-hmm. Your own original Your own cartoons. cartoons. Okay. Uh, so she was, and she really was basically a co-creator of all of those shows. Okay. Uh, Doug, you know, she went out and found Doug, Rugrats, and Ren and Stimpy. Those were her first shows she brought, and those all three, all three have hits. lasted 30 yeah. years. Oh, yeah. yeah. So mm-hmm. You can she she actually was leaving uh, the the entertainment industry because she was she worked for a lot of animation and got treated like crap. Always oh, was man. getting just kicked around like, and so she was ready to leave the and and, and her, like her this was her last thing she was ever gonna do. Like I'm just gonna try to go to Nickelodeon. Maybe it's better there. And she said all these guys like these rich powerful guys that treated her like crap when she was like think about all the generic Saturday morning cartoon shows mm-hmm, there were mm-hmm. they were they were yeah. good they were good but they weren't really there was not a lot of longevity there those same guys that were like whatever babe you don't know what you're talking about babe you know like <laughs> um then were begging her when she went over to nickelodeon and was high there they were like it. they were like please will you get my show on there and she's like begging her mm. I love, no. it. <laughs> I love it. I love it. That yeah. karma is so yeah. sweet. I oh, love yeah. it. Yeah. Big time. Yeah. That is she's so like, good. She's like, nope, I'm not putting your show on there. You That's know? a great so story. That's funny. That is a great, great story. Oh, I got another question. Go ahead. So d- when you was talking to Kurt Fogg, did he, did he, uh, are you asking about like, how come the kids not to put the shrine of the silver monkey together? Like no <laughs> kid, no kid can put it together whatsoever. I'm like, it's easy. So, did he ask yes. you? Yes. Like, yeah. We did. We talked about that a little bit, and then we also talked to Phil Moore about why no one could ever seem to do the uh, the final run. You know, when you go into the arcade at the mm-hmm. end of Nick Arcade, they were both things that, right when you're a kid, it seems so easy. And basically, he just said, you know, your nerves are on, you know, all the way up. Your adrenaline is all the way up because you might have a dude, a grown man, jump out and pull you. <laughs> into the cavern, you know? and, and that made more sense. It's easy when you're at home to be kind of like an armchair quarterback and be like, I could put that thing together. It's just three pieces. But when you're terrified that some dude's going to jump out and pull you away, mm-hmm. uh, you know, it does make a little more sense. He said that there were a lot of kids that, um, you know, this didn't make it in the documentary. They got full on freaked out, like vomiting. They were so scared. Oh, <laughs> uh, wow. Just, and it does make sense, you know, full on mental breakdown. You're yeah. scared, you're terrified, you got lights, it's just sensory overload. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I wonder if that ever happened when somebody was sliding down like like in double dare <laughs> sliding down a oh, tongue. Double dare, and it just man. vomit right into the There's, goo or whatever. There had to have been a lot of interesting things going on yeah. on the double dare yeah. sites, man. Yeah, and indeed. we do we do go into that a little bit in the documentary about some kids getting hurt on double dare. Oh yeah. That yeah. One. Oh yeah, it's the have... infamous one with the neck. Yeah, with the yeah. neck. The yeah. Neck. Yeah. yeah. Mm. It's oh. like, hey, I won't sue you if you give me that big TV. Hey, <laughs> hey you. buddy. <laughs> go right ahead. <laughs> what else do you want? <laughs> whatever you want. Yeah. Right. What story made me cringe and I didn't of course we didn't see it, but just the way he just Described it yeah. one, one turned one way and then the other the other <laughs> yeah. way. Just like, oh, yeah, ah. yeah, that Man. yeah, that would make me. But it's the kids yeah. made out of rubber, so. <laughs> yeah, they yeah. Are, at, at that age, we pretty much were. Yeah. Uh, definitely want to invite everybody in the chat and everybody watching to make sure you definitely check out the Orange Years, the yeah. Nickelodeon story on Amazon. In fact, um, Preem wanted to put up money for yeah. a documentary. Oh, yeah. For, for a giveaway. For, yeah, for yeah, a big giveaway. Yeah. One, yeah. Of, one of our uh, longtime viewers said he's going to purchase your documentary and use it as a, as as a, a giveaway. giveaway. So, I mean, we oh, definitely appreciate, that's awesome. Yeah. Appreciate that. And then, you know, it's, I don't know, man. It's, it, just looking back at Nickelodeon, it's like just Nickelodeon introduced me hmm. to Danger Mouse. Yes. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> Danger right. Mouse. Danger Mouse. I mean, and Banana Man and Count Duckula. Yeah, that yeah. is true. But like Danger Mouse was just one of those like if Nickelodeon didn't exist, I would have mm-hmm. never found out about that cartoon. Right. Like, anywhere because that was the first time I'd ever seen right. it. Now, granted, that was during the earlier years when they were you know trying to buy shows and and then start the network. But that was crazy, man. Just just. 
that's the other thing I forgot to ask you about the documentary before we uh, turn it over to the people. And I got one more too. I got, and, I got and one too. got yep. another one. Yep. Um, did you guys visit? Because I understand, yes, uh, you know, obviously at Universal Studios is closed now. Did you guys visit the Universal? Um, sorry, the Nickelodeon Studios, the, at least the building for as part of the documentary at all? Because I don't recall. We didn't. Okay. We didn't. I would love to have done that. There's a video of somebody going. Uh, the Hey Dude uh, Bar None Ranch is mm-hmm. still there, but it's yeah. like all dilapidated. Oh, wow. We originally were going to go there and maybe film something. Um, but, you know, we, we got so many interviews, we just didn't have time. We knew we couldn't do stuff like that. There was no time. But I wanted to go to both Nickelodeon Studios uh, and show what it is now. And then also, like, some of the places, you know, like the uh, the Camp Onawana. You know, it's not, it, that was actually a couple of different places spliced together. Mm-hmm. But definitely, I would, I would love to see the Hey Dude and just walk around on the Bar None Dude Ranch, you know. Nice. I think that'd be yeah, cool. That would be fun. Awesome. Yeah, All right. and there's right. a YouTube video. I don't know if I said it, but there's a YouTube video of some guy that does that. He sneaks yeah. on. And, oh wow! And walks yeah. Around. yeah. <laughs> right. So don't do that. Don't do that. Oh, no, definitely not. <laughs> that. Definitely right. not that. Not, <laughs> not condoning that. All right. So I got my one question that I want to ask right before we get to the AMA. Um, as we're all fans of Nickelodeon, we yeah. all know we have our favorite era of Nickelodeon. Yeah. Favorite decade. What is yours? That is so hard. Uh-huh. Um, uh-huh. So what, I mean, I, cause I'm kind of like the documentary, I'm the like perfect right middle age. Like I got to be a kid in both the eighties and the nineties. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I do love a lot of those. You can't do that on television uh-huh. and double dare. And like the early Nickelodeon shows, there was one called today's special. Um, See? Uh, oh yeah. Uh, that was one. But, but ultimately <laughs> if I, if I had to be true, like, 1991 was just an explosion. The That's whenever Doug, year. Doug, Rugrats, Ren and Stimpy, uh, Salute Your Shorts, mm-hmm. Clarissa, Pete and Pete. That's that's whenever all of those. I mean, yeah. think about that. That's when all those shows came about. Mm-hmm. Now Pete and Pete, Pete and Pete's kind of a weird one because it 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 was in the 80s as like a commercial. Like it started out as these little shorts, but mm-hmm. when it really became its own show was the 90s. So if yeah. I had to be true, I'd probably have to say the 90s just because I mean okay. that's whenever. Uh, Are You Afraid of the Dark? Salute Your Shorts. Clarissa Explains It All. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. Rocco's Modern Life. Yeah. Ren and Stimpy. All <laughs> yeah. of those. I mean, I mean, you can't go wrong with the 90s because that's literally when Nickelodeon really exploded. Like, that's when it blew up. Yeah, yeah. that's when it blew up because it was like, like you said, 1991, Double Dare was still hot, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. at yeah, that time. Yeah, it was. You know, yeah. Double Dare was still hot and then it just had everything else to go oh, along yeah. with. It just everything. So it was, it, yeah, it was great. So there was I a got show one. called, to, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry, yeah. no, 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 I'm sorry, go ahead. Well, there was a show called Tomorrow People. Do you guys ever I remember, remember that. that one? Yeah, mm-hmm. it was. It came, I remember coming on Sunday nights or something like that. Yeah. Oh, oh and sure. someone. Yeah, Alex Mack. That's Alex another Mack, great yeah. one. But, yep. but yeah, uh, and Alex Mack, if you liked it, you might like Tomorrow People because it was about these kids that kind of had these powers. Mm-hmm. Um, I was a huge, like, X-Men fan growing up. Yeah. And so, yeah. Uh, so I liked Tomorrow People because it kind of reminded me of the X-Men. The X-Men. Like, they were, mm-hmm. yeah. they were these, like, kids with these powers that manifested right about in puberty. But, yeah. I mean, I love You Can't Do It on Television, and I think that's probably what introduced me to, like, a British style of humor. Even though that show wasn't British, uh, Roger Price lived in England for a long time, and it definitely has a British feel. Like, it feels like Monty Python mm, in a lot yeah. of ways. Oh, yeah. Um, and so, I mean, I love that show, but ultimately, like, yeah, the 90s, I mean, you just, I mean, that's whenever every, Keenan and Kel, all that. I mean, mm-hmm. all those shows, that's when everything yep. really blew up. You are right. You're absolutely uh, right. So, Dido, what were you about to, real quick? Dido, what were you about to say about oh, today's special? I was going to say about today's special is because, like, a lot of people remember that from Nickelodeon. And remember, I think in pre, pre-chat we talked about our vicinity of being extremely close to Canada because my first uh, memory of that is watching that on TV Ontario because we used to get Canadian TV stations oh, wow. as well. So yeah. I remember watching a lot of because – you guys had a clip of Fred uh, Fred Penner's place that was on there. I, cl- yep. I think that was also on Nickelodeon, but I also watched that on there. And then today's special, and then it was another one that I saw. Oh, Sharon, uh, uh, God darn it, Sharon Lewis and Bram. And Bram, yeah, yeah, the skin of Marinky Dinky, Dinky, yeah, all that <laughs> really? stuff. Yeah, because yep. <laughs> I remember, and and like I said, in that documentary when it was coming. With all that stuff, I was like, oh, my gosh, I forgot about the, that the show. The floodgates and then, it popped yeah. up and then it popped up. So, yeah, yeah I think it's kind of cool that just just, just the watching the beginnings of, of, uh, of Nickelodeon and hearing about all that stuff and then – and then seeing to where they are right now, where I don't watch it at all, but, yeah. It, yeah, but it's still yeah, very, yeah. very nostalgic about this stuff. Like, yeah, it's just 
I appreciate, and I'm I'm really glad that you you made that documentary. You came out with it. So yeah, it was y- yeah, thanks. it was really well done. Yeah, really well done. Somebody asked the the Star Trek show. I think that was Space, Space Cases. Cases. Yep. Mm. And it had Look Walter Jones from Power Rangers. The yeah. Black yeah. Ranger was on there. Yes, yeah. I know. Yeah. I watched yeah. yeah. Of course you did. Of course you <laughs> yeah. did. Pocus, Power Rangers Pocus, freak Alamogocus. you. Yeah. 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 That's how they made the, the guy. You put his hat on and said Hocus Pocus Alamogocus. Yeah. Yeah. Alive. yeah. yeah. All right. So we have come to the uh, the Ask Me Anything portion of the, of the show where we are going to ask the questions that you want to ask Scott and he will answer them for you. And the chat has been on fire. You see. Oh, them. yeah. They've they've been asking a lot of questions. So who wants to go first out there in the chat and ask Scott anything you want answered? All right. Let's see who's going to come first. Yeah, let's see. Then we need some of that. Uh, where's where's <laughs> Amor? Where's, where's Amor? Music and everything. Where's oh. Amor? I, I, he, he should be ready to just fire. That, that, oh, no, Preem did it. Okay. Preem did it. All right. In an interview a few years ago, Mark Summers talked about the original slime recipe as vanilla pudding, applesauce, food coloring, and oatmeal. Did anyone you interviewed confirm the recipe? And have you ever tried <laughs> making it at home? So, first of all, I have tried making it home. And if you ever look at. Um, uh, we did a crowdfund video and it was just me and Adam, the, the uh, other director of the film talking about what we want to do. It's a very weird video, but it's all we had at the time. And we both get slimed in it. And um, I've heard multiple people contradict. Everyone had their own. When we would ask <laughs> what's it, It's like, no one wanted to give it up. Everyone would always tell us something a little different. And also Keenan Thompson in our doc, he brought up a good point because he's about the same age I am. And he watched Nickelodeon. It changes, right? Like if you watch, you can't do that on television. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. it's it's very light colored mm-hmm. and it's chunky. Mm-hmm. And then, oh yeah, yeah. And then by the end, uh, it was like very. It's very liquidy. Like yeah, when you watch very. it now, it's more liquidy. Yeah. yeah. Um. So no one really ever gave us the answer, but the best I could say is mashed potatoes, uh, with maybe some pudding and oh. uh, green dye. Oh. Oh. <laughs> hey man, it's green dye. You love green. I love the color green. <laughs> yes, most definitely, best color. But, you know, when it comes to slime, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So Sabrina is asking now, I love how it is edited together. Did you plan to do it this in chronological order? Yeah. So thank you for saying that. I was one of the editors on the film. Um, Sean Cawthon, our director, he helped out with the editing. And a really talented guy named Bradford Thomason uh, helped edit it. And Bradford was someone that I reached out to because I was a fan of his. He did a showbiz pizza doc that if you haven't seen it, it's great. It's called The Rock of Fire Explosion. And he did a documentary about the gorgeous ladies of wrestling. Oh, so I love his oh, editing nice. style. I remember the documentary. It's, it's fantastic. He's so good. Um, and so he came on board and helped us. And yeah, we, we, that was really the hardest thing is how, how do we keep the through line of Nickelodeon while also telling the story of these? So we did want to keep it in chronological order. So it felt like a story with rising action, you know. So we always did want to do it in chronological order. We had thought for a second about maybe not. But really, it only made sense to do it that way. So you start with this little network that no one cared about and everyone mm-hmm. said it was going to go under. And then they got a little bigger, a little bigger, a little bigger. Um, so, yeah, it, it almost was. It, it was pretty much always that we want to do it in chronological order. Okay. Uh, let's see. Cosidius75 is asking, do you think they could make a remake of the show? You can't do that on television. Like with Barth or, let's see, Firing Squad scene. I think maybe just in the sense of today's age. Yeah, today's age. Doing age, something like that do today. That. Yeah. Do you think they could, could you do, do it? Like? I don't know. So um, the team, uh, Roger Price, his kind of beneficiary, his, he works with a guy named B.D. Kennedy, uh, and the, he was nothing but helpful throughout this whole thing. That's why the, even though that show is so old, um, the quality looks so good. He gave me, like, the real master tapes and oh, stuff. Wow. So. Wow. And that show is crazy. You can find it. He has a YouTube channel. That show, it was, you know, it was Canadian. It was brought mm-hmm. over here. But in Canada, it had, like, musical guests. It had more stuff in its original form. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and so they are trying. They, they, I, I think they want to do another version, and I'd love to see it. I don't – I think you would have to change it pretty – a lot to make it okay for today (laughs) but um you know one thing that you that nickelodeon did all throughout the 80s and 90s and i think you can't do that on television was the starting point was the adults were idiots if you look on that show the bus driver the mom the dad the (laughs) librarian oh yeah Yeah. they were all the, the adults were all 
dumb and bad people. And when you're a kid, that's how you feel that adults just are stupid and are out <laughs> to get you. Um, so I would love, and, and you know, that was carried over into Ugg, the counselor from, <laughs> uh, from Salute Your Shorts and the parents on Rugrats and all those shows always had dumb, um, dumb, dumb, dumb adults. So I would love for more shows to have that. I feel like so many shows now, they want to appeal to both kids and adults. And I think that's cool, but I'd love for a show to just be for kids and have dumb adults. So I would love, <laughs> I would love for you can't do it on television to come back. I don't know if it could happen though. That's fair. <laughs> okay. So minority game says, what was the most disappointing thing you learned doing the documentary? Mm, I love that question. It was a great one. Yeah, that is a great question. The most disappointing thing. Um, you know, um, we, almost everybody it's it's a, it's hard because i met so many of my heroes you know people i grew up watching and then also the people that were making these shows are my heroes too because i want to be a filmmaker you know that's what i'm trying to do so to get oh, to yeah. talk to mm -hmm. these fantastic people and everybody was nice like uh i always have to say this keenan thompson is arguably the biggest person you know in our documentary and that guy was so nice <laughs> And, you know, it would have been really disappointed if he'd been a jerk, but he was not, <laughs> you know? Um, and uh, and so it's like we kept waiting. We're like, surely we're going to run into a diva. And we literally never, ever, ever did. Um, I would say, like, the only disappointing parts are, you know, some of, hearing some of the stories of these child actors, what they went through um, after. You know, because now, like, for example, Alex Mack, who uh, – um, Larissa Olenek is the actress who played Alex Mack. At the time, it was awesome. And now it's awesome because everybody's nostalgic. Mm -hmm. But right afterwards, people were kind of mean to her. And that, and you think about that, like around 2000, when edgy humor is really hard, I'm sure people picked on them uh, a lot. So hearing just kind of mm -hmm. the, the, the troubles that those people went through, um, you know, I think is, is, it was probably the most disappointing thing. Because you're like, man, these people are all so great. I want their lives to be good. Uh, but hearing just what they had to go through as a child actor was kind of heartbreaking sometimes. Oh, yeah. I, th I think that with with uh, Keenan Thompson, I think part of why he is as gracious as he is is I think he understands that it's like I've been on TV for a very long time and it's afforded me, you know, this fun and great life. And it's just like, you know, people are going to want to ask questions about mm -hmm. that. They're going to be interested in that. They're going to want to know you know, what was it like? So I, mm -hmm. I, I do appreciate that, you know, he was as down earth as you're describing. Yeah. So, I mean, that's, yeah. that's awesome. Yeah, that is, that is awesome. Um, keep the questions coming, everybody. We need, we need some more. So this is a simple one. Uh, huh? What? Go ahead. Uh, uh, Takeem 83 says, uh, all that or roundhouse. <laughs> <sighs> I mean, I have to say, I have to say all that. I, I, I mean, roundhouse is, was original a more original idea like there's nothing that's ever been like roundhouse before or after it such a weird unique show but i mean you can't discount like i mean all that had look back at the musical guests that were on all that it's insane mm -hmm. i love the fact that they didn't get just kids you know it's not like they were like okay let's have like another bad creation and hansen and mm -hmm. uh crisscross like only kid musicians they mm -hmm. had like coolio on there and tlc um you know uh so i like that that they got real musicians for kids mm -hmm. and i mean look at the talent that came out of that show too you know yeah. um you know not just i mean keenan thompson obviously is a, a big one but you know alisa reyes who's a producer she was a producer on uh our documentary and she's had a very prolific voice acting career she's voicing uh la cienica boulevardes on the Proud Family oh, right man, now. Wow. Um, nice. And, you know, Lori Beth Denberg's done a lot. Uh, Brian Robbins was one of the people that worked on that show behind the scenes. And now he's the freaking president of Nickelodeon. So if really? I had to say, yeah, he's the president of Nickelodeon. Oh, wow. Like, okay. 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 Wow. Okay. So now we're getting a few more. Um, oh. So Noam3711 is asking, I can only imagine what you left on the cutting room floor. Do you think that the kind that kind of live action kids game shows will ever come back? Um, personally, I would say no. And the reason is they tried it like Double Dare since while we yeah. were working on while we were working on this documentary, Double Dare came back and got canceled already. Mm. Um, 
and it was great. It was awesome. Like I watched it and it, and it felt like the old one. I think that, you know, think about to like being in the eighties and nineties. Like if you're like, Hey, who was that guy in that movie that, that, you know, the one with the, the eyes, like, and you're like, who was it? And you're like, Oh yeah, it's Steve Buscemi. Like mm -hmm. if you were the guy that could remember that you were valued in your group of friends, like that's the dude that knows everything. Whereas now if you're sitting around with your friend, you're like, who is that one person that was in, you know, airheads. And you can just be like, uh, and you can just yeah. look it up on your phone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think that knowledge isn't necessarily like like memorization and knowledge. It's not as um, like looked up to as it was. So, I mean, mm -hmm. I would like, hey, I would love for it to like I would love for Double Dare, uh, yeah. Guts and especially like yeah. you said, Nick Arcade. Yeah. I would love for those to come back. But I just don't yeah. think that kids are as into it anymore, mm -hmm. which is really too bad. Yeah, it it's is. really too bad. They don't know what they're missing. Uh, they don't, yeah. They really don't. All right. Dutter, you got Priam's question. Well, he says, uh, two-part question. Number one, given the scope of the documentary, was there anything that you shot that ended up on the cutting room floor due to time? And two, what's next for you? Do you see yourself making something like the Orange Years in the future but with other, with other properties? Yeah. Um, so, first of all, yes, there's a lot left on the cutting room floor. And um, – I really wish that there was a way we could do a docu-series. Even, I mean, honestly, we could bust this out into a docu-series without even filming anything else. We got wow. so much. Wow. Man. Netflix. I'm super <laughs> excited. I want to I wanna watch that. Yes, like, seriously, absolutely. I do. I want to watch that. And it's so funny. It's so funny because hindsight is 2020. Like, we tried to sell it that way. Um, and, and, you know, people are like, I don't know. But now that it's out there and people are liking it, it's like, well, now maybe we'll, will we do it? Or maybe if we did a DVD, someone said director's cut. And I apologize. My, my, my internet connection is bad, so I can't read the names. Um, so no disrespect for not yeah. saying I can't quite read the purple. But uh, director's cut, yeah, I would love to either do a director's cut or if we could do like a four-part series where we take it slower. Because, uh, mm -hmm. I mean, like, you know, um, we did have a segment that was all about Nick at Night that had to get mm -hmm. cut for time. Mm -hmm. Dude, uh, I swear to you, Nick at Night was where I love fell in love with Get Smart. Like I, I had never yeah. seen Get Smart before Nick at Night, and I loved that show. And it was it was one of those for me. It, it I you know I had a single mom, and we bonded so much because I was watching the shows that she loved together, mm. uh, and it was just great. And 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 I love I love how it shows you how smart Nickelodeon was that you know um, they had nothing originally. It was the Entertainment Channel that mm -hmm. went on to become A&E. That's what played at night on Nickelodeon. And they lost that. Mm -hmm. So they're like, what do we play? We have, we, we have to come up with something, but we have no budget. Oh, let's just get a bunch of 50 shows and play those. Um, surely we can get those for cheap because nobody else is, uh, no one else is playing them. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and then it'll be a show for all the kids. And what's funny is the first show that they played on Nick at Night um, was uh, Mr. Ed. And, and, <laughs> oh, and they yeah. did that. They did that because, think about it, if you were a kid that was still awake, that's a show that you might watch because it was about a talking horse. It shows mm -hmm. that every single thing that they did, they put a lot of thought and effort into every little decision. So, yeah, to answer, that, that, to answer the first part of your question, I would love to do another one like that. I'm, I, and then what's next for me, I'm currently working on a documentary about the group Guar. Uh, and Guar is a – if you – a lot of people are like who's that, and I always say Empire Records. If you if you ever remember Empire Records, <laughs> mm -hmm. there's the scene where Ethan Embry eats the the, the pot brownies, and he, he imagines himself getting eaten by uh, by Guar. Mm -hmm. And uh, my goal is, uh, if people are like, oh, I'm not into that, and I'm like, I, I'm not really super into heavy metal either. Um, I'm more like a punk guy, but but my goal is to, I'm not trying to make. Um, a heavy metal doc like this is a group of anybody that's ever had a dream like these guys could have sold out and played like creed style of music or lincoln park or nickelback at any point they could have done that and they didn't mm. they did what um what you know what what they wanted to do for all these years so that's what's next for me but i would love to do something along the lines of like this because obviously that's going to be a different kind of documentary but i would love to to do something more like this in the future we'll, we'll see if the opportunity presents itself to me how about the origins of fox kids <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah that's not bad that's not that's bad not bad wow. that's not bad all right so another question um minority games is asking what was your favorite nick at night show uh, that's a difficult one. I, you know, I, oh man, I mean, I liked Get Smart because it was funny. I loved 
there was a weird show called Dobie Gillis, and yeah. I love that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I really loved, you know, they played Alfred Hitchcock on there, and I loved that because it was kind of, kind of I spooky. I don't remember that. No, they did. They did. That, that was that was my introduction to Alfred Hitchcock was Nick at Night. Okay. Yeah. All right. Because okay. it it was just like you know my brothers they were old, you know they're older than me knew about right. Hitchcock, but I'm just like yeah. who's this guy. I like his voice though, but it's right. like who's this guy? And then you know come Goody. to find he's like yeah. one of the best directors in the world, but yeah. it's just like wow. Yes, and that that was my first. Uh, it, it was a lot like the Twilight Zone. It was like Twilight Zone, but just Alfred Hitchcock. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, and I loved it. And I agree, we do need another Mr. Wizard's World show. Yes. That show is oh, great. Yeah. Mr. Wizard. I miss yeah. Mr. Wizard. Mr. Wizard was great. That. Yeah, that that was yeah. another one. Yeah, yeah, it was. We had like Be- Beekman's World, and then mm-hmm. we had, of course, the biggest one after Mr. Wizard was uh, Bill Nye the Science Guy. But yep. But I would love. I mean, yeah, we need that, and I think people would be into that today. I think kids would love that today. So. Somebody do it. <laughs> yeah, it'd be awesome. Yeah. It would be awesome. It would right. be they did try to bring back uh, Bill and I on, on Netflix, I thought. Yeah, that's right. I think you're right. Yeah. I did, I, I, for whatever reason, I, think you're like, right. I didn't watch it. I, I don't think know. you're right. <laughs> um, I think it goes back to, like Scott was saying, with, with the phones and Google and, and all the different, uh, like, information is just at your fingertips. Now. Yeah. Back then, it was like you had a show. Like, Mr. I used to watch all of Mr. Wizard's mm-hmm. World because it was like, okay, they're about to do something I know I'm not allowed to do. I'm, <laughs> yeah. I'm about to just watch yeah. him, you know, take get on the stove and do something crazy, you know, mm-hmm. some science. But it's like, yeah. wow. You know, like, hey, when are you going to see this anywhere else? Right. A funny thing about Nickelodeon is, you know, what what really, like, the, the running theme between the 80s and 90s Nickelodeon, because all those shows were different, right? Like, mm-hmm. Are You Afraid of the Dark, Ren and Stimpy, My Brother and Me, Double Dare. They were all totally different shows, but they were all very irreverent. You know, they were all kind of, like, you know, irreverent, like, kind of naughty shows. And Mr. Wizard's World wasn't. It was just a straightforward entertainment show. But when we talked to Scott Webb, he was one of the higher ups at Nickelodeon. He said the reason why it did kind of fit in with the irreverent shows is because it was kind of accidentally irreverent <laughs> in that they're blowing stuff up, you know, like right. it was uh, even though Mr. Wizard was very like, hey, kids, here's, you know, you mix this. I mean, you're still blowing stuff up. So it still felt like. You know, I'm watching something kind of crazy here. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know him in the chat just even brought up Mr. Wizard is the reason why I like Mythbusters. I mean, it's just, you know, all those different things just kind of just roll into each other because it's like, where else are you going to, you know, like you said, be able to blow stuff up or at least see how it's done, which was, like you said, it was kind of interesting that he was like, yeah, here's a sodium phosphate. Here's this. It's like, oh, so this is how I can make something that can blow up my mom's kitchen. Yep. (laughs) It was, oh, man. All right, uh, Drizzed22579, I know he doesn't say it that way, but I'm going to. Uh, <laughs> he says, since you're a gamer, have you thought about doing a documentary about video games? Yeah, I would love to. And um, the problem is finding a unique angle of something that like that, that, that tells a compelling story uh, that hasn't been done already. You, like, you know, there was... Um, there was a docu-series that just was on Netflix. Mm-hmm, I'm, my mm-hmm. na- I'm blanking on it. Um, and I love like uh, 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 Snake, uh, Man versus Snake, and uh, Fistful of Quarters, King of Kong. Mm-hmm. Those are great video game documentaries. So I'm, I'm, I would love to do a video game documentary, just if I can find the right story and also something that, that you know, hasn't already been done. Oh, another one that just came out was uh, Console Wars. It's oh, on uh, yeah, yeah. That's, Console that Wars was dope. I yeah. love that one. That one was great. I love that. Yeah, like yeah. I, I love that stuff. So yeah, it's just finding the right angle and like if I can find a story that hasn't already been told. There's one uh, that just came out. Um, uh, it's a docu series and it's um, about video game box art and that's pretty cool. Oh really? Um, um, but yeah, oh, if I yeah, that would be dope. Because that dude that did those box art for Nintendo, Mm -hmm. like back in the day. Oh, great stuff. Great, great stuff. Um, Uh, I want to say thanks to Minority Games for the 1,000 bits. Appreciate that, the cheer. Um, And uh, Sabrina's, yes, that's the next question I was actually about to ask. Uh, Sabrina's asking, is there a reason why you stopped when you didn't talk about Drake and Josh and the the aught years, era? There, Yeah, there is. And that's something that we wanted to kind of be clear of is as – I'm not a young guy anymore. I, 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 I don't want to ever be one of those people that says everything was better in my day. Uh, but go ahead. Let's just say it. Let's just go ahead and say it. Like, I feel like if you got, if you got to grow up in the nineties, you got the best music, you got yeah. the best TV, you got the best everything. But, but we didn't want to like, like I, like for example, Invader Zim, I think is a, 
phenomenal oh. cartoon. Mm -hmm. And that cartoon came out a little bit later. So really what helped us out a lot is when we found out about Geraldine Laybourne. Like she became our story. Like it's her story. It's not just Nickelodeon. So that gave us a definitive beginning and ending point was kind of when she got there and when she left is what our story was. So we end when she left and that was before like Drake and Josh and that stuff mm. came out. So um, we're not saying that that, that era wasn't as good, but it it's just, that's, that was our logical ending point was once SpongeBob, it, a couple of things kind of happened at the same time where they got SpongeBob, which at that point to me, Nickelodeon became what it is now which is just a juggernaut. They're they're on par with Disney. They're no yeah. longer an underdog. And it's yeah. also when she left. So that just gave us a nice uh, ending point. So that's the only reason we did it. And we did, you know, I think that also shows you how awesome Nickelodeon was because we interviewed Drake Bell in the documentary and we don't even talk about his show. <laughs> his show. You know? Yeah. I think, and again, like you said with Geraldine, I like again as a kid you don't know any of these people because you're just like oh right. it's, it's a channel that's on you know but she was amazing just in the, just in her yeah. way of thinking yeah about nickelodeon it was this you know just just the way of approaching the shows mm -hmm. and everything is like wow so i'm gonna let you know them go to the next question but once you mentioned her name it really jogged my memory of like yeah she's awesome yeah there was yeah. a question i saw back a little bit uh that i'm missing I, well prima asked one he said did you get a chance to interview do any interviews regarding our ah, real monsters so that was a, a you know another one that um we wanted to do um so there's a company called klasky chupo and mm -hmm. they rug rats they were part of rug rats and what's funny is they actually got their start on the simpsons remember when the simpsons was on a show called the tracy oh, ullman tracy the tracy ullman yeah. show yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Tracy Ullman show they were the ones that did that oh wow and then um they um they didn't want when it became a show they just didn't want to do it um and then they did you know they did a lot of shows Rugrats was their first but then their next one was All Real Monsters and then they've done two or three after that um and for whatever reason they just didn't want to be part of the documentary so mm -hmm. um we we show their if you look there's a, a we show um as b-roll we show their building um, where it's like it's got like rugrats and all this stuff on the walls uh, on the outside. It's this real cool looking building, but mm -hmm. they didn't want to do it. And I, I don't I don't know why, but they just didn't want to be a part of it. But so we interviewed Paul Germain, who was a, another creator. He wasn't part of Klasky Chupo, but he was another creator and writer for Rugrats, and he was a super awesome guy. So at least we got him. That's cool. Yeah, that is cool. That is definitely cool. Um, Minority Games had a question, and also real quick before I forget, uh, Prem, appreciate the uh, looks 1500. like fifteen hundred bits. So thank you for the 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 cheers there, mm -hmm. sir. Uh, Minority Games um, is asking, what was, what's your opinion on how Nickelodeon is now, like the the current um, iteration? <laughs> Loaded question. Yeah, I mean, it's different. You know, the one thing that I'll say is when I. When, when I think about that, I, I honestly have to think about what shows are Nickelodeon shows and what are other shows. Like, because like, you know, my kids, they watch kids shows, but they watch them on like Netflix or Hulu. So I actually had to stop and think like you can back in the day, there was a clear cut. You knew what was a Disney show. Oh, yeah. Because all the kids had perfect teeth and bleach blonde. <laughs> highlights and, and, you know. <laughs> And then Nickelodeon is where you saw kids that looked more real and, mm -hmm. and it was a little edgier and a little more like, uh, like felt like kids you could, and, and not saying anything bad. I, I mean, look at how talented, I mean, Britney Spears, Christina Aguilera, Justin Ryan Timberlake. Gosling, yeah. Justin Timberlake. I mean, yeah. clearly those kids are super talented, but it was just, it was different. But the Mickey Mouse Club was lame. It was lame. I don't care yeah. what anybody says. Mickey Mouse Club was lame <laughs> as hell. It was. It was. Yeah. It, and <laughs> it was. <laughs> yes. Um, there was only one thing. There was a group called the Party. I don't know if you remember them. But no, I remember, that Mickey was an Mouse early, Club. early Mickey Mouse early. Club, and early that's when Mickey. I used to watch Mickey Mouse Club. Yeah, there was a. I loved them. I wanted to be part of it, but yeah, after that. Um, mm -hmm. But I just think that Nickelodeon. It's not different. Like I have to stop and think about which shows are Disney shows, and which shows are Nickelodeon shows. You know, like there's a show called The Octonauts that's really big. You know, and I think Mark Summers says it best where, hey, they're making more money now than they've ever made it. Oh, yeah. If that mm -hmm. if that's what's important, then they're more successful now than they've ever been. You mm -hmm. know, but but uh, I do think that when you get that big, some of the heart is gone. You mm -hmm. know, 
Oh yeah, I mean it's it's I, almost I unavoidable, like, and like you said yeah. with um with Miss Laybourne, that was there. She was kind of the heart of mm-hmm. why things worked the way they worked mm-hmm. because it was her, her mentality and her approach to it. Right. Yeah, and the people that she would bring in, you you it's, that's kind of like that's a perfect storm, and yeah. you're not going to be able yeah. to just re, you know once you get bigger and more execs and more you know whatever got their hands in it, it's never going to be the same. Yep. No. So I got a question. I hope this question makes sense, but why do you feel, why do you think this story needed to be told? So, uh, you know, like uh, uh, an analogy that I use, I call it prince or poison, where people that are about our age, Mm -hmm. you're nostalgic for things. And some things you like just because they're nostalgic and some things you like because they were amazing. And I love looking back at that. Like, and so Poison is a band that I, when I hear them, I get a warm feeling because they were an 80s band. But I can totally admit that they are not like great, you know? <laughs> but um, whereas, you know, you know, Prince is nostalgic, but it's awesome, you know? It's, yeah. it's, it, you don't like Prince because it's 80s music. You like Prince because it's freaking amazing music. Yeah. And so, we wanted to look at this and, and say, are we all this stuff? We, 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 when we would talk to people about 80s and 90s Nickelodeon, you could see people's eyes just light up and they'd get so excited. It's like, oh, man, what's your favorite show? What did you like better? Were you, were you more into this? Were you more? All the stuff that we've been talking about on this podcast. And we noticed it wasn't really like that for PBS or Disney Channel. And we wanted to find out why. Is it just because it's what was on when you're a kid and you're nostalgic? Or was there something more there? And we truly felt there was something more there. And it wasn't just nostalgia. And we wanted to to dissect what what is it? And we also, we realized there were all these people, you know, Geraldine Laybourne. (laughs) You don't don't know about Geraldine Laybourne, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, With Mr. Rogers, I think that's a fantastic documentary. But, uh, and and, and, and you already knew who Mr. Rogers was. He deserves all the credit he gets because he's awesome. But, you know, Geraldine Laybourne, she basically gave all of us 80s and 90s kids this awesome stuff, you know, um, to watch. Uh, and you didn't know her name. And we wanted you to know, you know, we wanted people to know who who was behind all this stuff. And that uh, there was a lot of heart and a lot of care and a lot of thought that went into it. Definitely. Nice. Yep. That's great. I, I, said you had one. Yep. one last question. Yeah. Now, you have a lot of things from Nickelodeon. I'm pretty sure they gave you a lot of footage. There was this one short that I remember seeing on Nickelodeon where it was just okay. French. It was I, th- I don't know. I don't remember if there was any talking in it. I just remember it was a frog and it was going to get cooked or something. And I, I wish I can. I can't find it on net. I'm not Netflix. Excuse me. YouTube. I can't find it on Google. It was just like a short, like in between shows. Are you or anything. Sure. You I'm sure. I'm 100% it was Nickelodeon. It's real. Uh, you sure it's real? Yes, I'm sure it's real. It was like a French what? chef and and. Did you see anything or hear anything about the shorts that might have been done uh, before Nickelodeon started doing all their original <laughs> stuff? Because that one, it's out there. I know it's out there, and I need to see it. <laughs> I'm going to try to find it. I, like, like every, what you're saying, it's like I know I remember that too. Yeah. Uh, and there were other ones. And what's funny is MTV kind of did stuff like that. Remember Liquid Television? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Liquid yeah. TV. Shorts. Yeah, where there was. I remember there was one where like the cat, and it was like the cat came back. Yeah, yeah, the very next, next day. day. And it's all yeah. about this dude trying to like get rid of this cat, and it keeps yeah. coming back, and it's like really <laughs> scary. And it kind of reminds me of like what you're talking about. Uh, I gotta like, uh, I gotta look into that. I, I, yeah, I want to. Man, I wish we could figure out what that was. <laughs> yeah. I wonder... I, I've searched on Google what I think I, you know what I remember, and I just I can't find it. And I know it fast exists. Food. Oh look, oh, there it is. is. There it is. Drift, it was drift, called right. fast food. Yeah, it's called fast food. All right, yeah, you're not crazy. Okay, okay. On YouTube. Can... All right, all right, great. Uh, awesome. So cameras up, everybody. Uh, first of all, I want to absolutely thank Scott for yes, joining yes. us on the show today. Uh, if you read in the chat. Uh, they're all like, "Can we get another thirty <laughs> minutes with this dude?" Like he's spitting facts. This is this is awesome. It's been a lot of fun, Scott. Thank you very much. We cannot uh, we cannot say thank you enough. Oh, the, the pleasure was the pleasure was all mine. Thanks for you guys for all the great questions and 
thanks to everybody that asked questions. Those were those were all great questions. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, thank you so much. This was yeah. amazing. Anybody, anybody, the fact that anybody would watch this documentary uh that we made just means a lot to me so thank you oh it, it meant a lot to us man. oh yeah definitely, oh, definitely me, me. You, 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 I, guys, I, you know honestly yeah. i didn't i didn't know i needed to watch this documentary before i watched it because yeah. when i watched it i was just like man i remember and, them days now yeah and you guys did an outstanding job putting it together you, you know i'm definitely looking forward mm. to whatever you guys next next piece is going to be for sure thank so, you i mean yeah well re- before we go how can people get in Obviously, you don't want a million people just sending you, you know, <laughs> questions and whatnot. But like, how can people see like you know some of you, like keep in touch with like your upcoming work and stuff like that? Like, is there you have like a Instagram or anything you want to plug? Yeah, I'm like a weirdo where I you know like kind of live like I did in the '90s. I don't do a lot of uh, social media or uh, any of that stuff. But the Orange Years has uh, Instagram. That's where we're kind of the most active okay but you can you can go to our website uh the orange and shoot us a message there we love hearing from people because i love this because we were all experiencing this together yeah. you know we were all of us yeah. we were watching it at the same time and so to hear people even when people are like hey man screw you for not talking about this one show <laughs> I, I even like that you know um so you can shoot us a message on instagram or or go to our website the orange and shoot us a message like Whatever you want, you know it's great to hear from people. That's awesome, man. Awesome. That's very thank awesome. you, thank you once again, Scott, uh, for for being on the show with us. Uh, GQ, you got a message for our patrons? Don't uh, you? Just real quick, I'm not gonna because Scott is here. I don't want to belabor the point, but we would definitely want to say a no big, big appreciation to uh, all of our Culture Junkies level patrons: to Marcus Smith, Fab Mert Life, the Net Net, and the Iguana Man. And if you want to, you know get your name shouted out in the show just make sure that you uh, go over to patreon.com slash culture junkies and you can support a culture junkie for as little as a dollar a month doesn't have to be a dollar a day like some of those really uh money hungry charities out there but uh <laughs> yeah so we'll turn, <laughs> them, turn it back over to ken shiro all right man thank you very much minority games for that for that last tip on the way out the door uh you know, want to thank Scott one more time for being on the show with us today. We we hope you all have enjoyed this very special episode of Culture Junkies Live. Uh, next week's show, uh, make sure you pay attention to our social medias right now. I think you know my my mind is just blown because of what we just talked about. I don't oh, even, yeah. know, what, I don't I even mean, know what we're going to be doing next week yet, but it's going to be a good one. Some fun. Yeah, it's going to be some fun. You guys, will, you guys will enjoy the next thing coming up. Yes, you will. So uh, we'll make sure to put it out on our social medias. Make sure you watch our Instagram and our Facebook for for updates on what we'll be doing next. Uh, so for my good friends, the great Atakuji, GQ, and Super Nerd Plus, I am Kinshiro. We'll see you guys next week, 9 p.m. Eastern, 8 p.m. Central. Have a great one. Thanks once again, Scott yes, and Marcus thank you, Smith. Scott. Thank you for 100 bits. Thank you. Thank so you. Much. Bye-bye, everybody. Cool. The credits are on. The credits man. Are on. Watch them roll on. Yeah. <laughs> man, it's great, man. It, it's, no, that was awesome, that was, man. That was Definitely awesome appreciate show. you. I'm so excited you guys like got in contact with me. <laughs> I found it. Yeah. I mean the fast food thing. Oh, you it found is, it! It's on YouTube. Sweet. Here it is, right there. I want to watch it. Thank awesome. the thank the internet. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> well, thank Drist first. He was the one that actually you know pointed out That's to you. True. You know, Drist yes. was the one. Thanks, Scott, Drist. before we go, can we get you to record a quick uh, promo? Yeah, for sure. Whatever yeah, you need. Awesome. Did you, uh, did you raid? Did you raid? Oh, let me let me raid right now. Oh, actually. sorry. We're we're raiding somebody oh, else's uh, thing real quick. Somebody else's. Oh, screen. cool. Yeah. There so. we go. Start and the raid. the raid is officially the raid raided. Started. So Sweet. Show next week, right? Oh, oh I should bring the Lego show. Right it over here. Right? Um, oh, we'll oh so. Oh, All right, hold on. No, no. Let's let's.